There's really two films that you have to talk about. The film that came out into the world and was massively successful and made all this money and had lovers and haters and magazine covers. The film that we made was a bunch of scrappy kids on the East Coast. We kind of came from out of left field with practically no resources and a cool idea and just broke down all the walls. Something that we had never expected. It was like the biggest gift you could ever get times a hundred. It was like the dream. It was the dream come true for us. We were kind of like the poster children for the American dream through the lens of independent film. And a lot of people credit us with kind of inventing the found footage genre, and I, I don't believe we did. We, we certainly helped popularize it. That was the only way to tell the story. You know, it was like, okay, this, there's this footage that's uncovered. So, okay, how, how did they shoot the footage? I had been through survival school when I was in the Army and sort of came up with the idea of why don't we just give the cameras to the actors and run them through like a giant film obstacle course where the story kind of tells itself through the things that we put them through and let them record it. I was really excited about how they were going to do it because it meant that it was just the three of us actors pretty much making the movie. We knew it was going to be improvised. We knew that we would kind of get information as we needed it because Ed and Dan wanted us reacting naturally to what was actually happening. And they told us up front, look, the first day you're going to have a sandwich, you're going to have a banana, you're going to have a dinner, you're going to have stuff, and every day you're going to have a little less. So by the end, you're not gonna starve, but you're gonna be hungry. We wanna make this uncomfortable for you. We wanna make this believable. Help us! This is not the way to get out of here. It was a difficult film to edit, just because when you look at all that footage we shot, all the raw material, there's a lot of great performances in there, you know, which is a credit to the actors, but doesn't necessarily add to the plot. So, you know, at the end of about a year, we held our own test screening and whittled it down and whittled it down. But there's all these moments of amazement for me with the Blair Witch. I am so, so sorry. But then, you know, when we get into Sundance, then like the really kind of what the hell moments start happening. It was like a Thursday night, I think. Somebody called from Sundance and he was like, uh, yeah, we want you to play in the festival and we want you to be part of the midnight section. I hung up without getting any information. I was like, all right, you know, yeah, all right, I'll call back, whatever. And I was like, we got in. And it was just like this crazy celebration. We started getting phone calls from agents. We started getting phone calls from attorneys. We started getting phone calls like, oh, we hear you're on Sundance. There was a lot of interest. There was a lot of people asking questions. So we just kind of put up this website with some facts about the kids, you know, the, the disappearance and some photos and kind of treated it like a real event, like a real disappearance. The website became very popular. And by the time we went to Sundance, we had a mailing list of like 10,000 members, which is pretty huge for back in the day. So I think all that vibe kind of like fed really well into Sundance. So we kind of rolled into Sundance and there was already this buzz about the movie. We were all so excited for our premiere at midnight and we come around the corner from the Egyptian theater and there's this long alley that's the waiting area. And that alley was completely full. It was hundreds and hundreds of people. Our agents were telling us that all these people from all these companies were there. Pretty much everybody that had the ability to buy a film was at that screening. And the screening went really well. Everybody was talking about the movie. Everybody was excited. People were kind of coming out. Is this real? You know, some were angry. Some were like completely like their mouths were hanging open. And then uh, around two o'clock in the morning, we got a call, and the artists and people wanted to talk to our lawyers and our representatives. And they said, "We want to, we want to buy the movie. You know, we want to buy it tonight." And then it was confirmed. We sold. And next morning, everything changed. We were doing interviews. We were being shuttled around as the first sale of Sundance. And before we knew it, we were on magazines and articles being written up. We had a variety reporter following us around the entire week. All kinds of crazy stuff just happened. It was this just crazy whirlwind. And so we were still kind of involved with it at that time. That was before they realized that they would have had a much easier time marketing it if we were really dead. So they did the best they could to simulate that. It was basically the first viral marketing that ever happened. Once Artisan bought us, they took the website down and they redesigned it and they put it up section by section. So they knew the power of that website and I think the website was you know, one of the most highly trafficked websites of that year. This was sort of pretty close to the dawn of internet marketing for movies and 
you got this film that's shot on video. So it looks like mine and your home videos. Nothing ever looked like that on a big screen before ever. So you have all these elements coming into play. It kind of just exploded all over the world. We platformed and opened at the Angelica and the in New Art here in LA, and there were lines around the block. And then once that first weekend came in, we made like $28 million. The final box office number, I, I think it was 140 or something like that domestic, and just under 250 million worldwide. And I think still holds the record of the most profitable film relative to its initial investment. Blair Witch is definitely responsible for this found footage craze. Right place and right time at the beginning of a subgenre that would eventually become, I think, a pretty established subgenre of film. I guess we did a good enough job with it, and people bit into it hard and believed it. That created this sort of new genre of found footage. It shows that the right idea can still be as big as anything Hollywood has to offer. That was a great thing about this movie. Filmmaking has become accessible now to everybody. And that's important. As long as you've got a strong concept and it's well executed and good writing, um, you can find an audience. And I'm so glad that we had the opportunity to be an example of how that, how that could actually work. We were just making the film we could with the resources we had and trying to make it as cool as possible. And, you know, for a moment in time, moved all the way to the front of the line. It was an awesome ride. And, you know, if, if, if I end up being a one-hit wonder, I'll take it. It was truly innovative at its time. It was an underdog movie that took big risks with a big heart. And what's not to enjoy about that? <laughs>